by Jacksonville. He's Hacker. I like a good serial killer documentary. He hasn't taken the pounding that wide receivers take. Uh, it's just a pound job, and, and guys are tired towards that, that four minutes. And he doesn't shy away from opinion. I would be lying to you if I said I had not heard things. They're like a bad rash. You hear a lot of things. Some are true, some aren't. It's Hacker After Dark on 1010XL. And a very good Tuesday evening to you, Jacksonville. It is Hacker After Dark, 1010XL, 92.5 FM with Dylan Denmark. The Hacker Ryan Green with you. Glad you are with us now Tuesdays, 8 o'clock to 10 o'clock, every night of the week, Monday through Friday, 8 p.m. to 10 p.m. right here on Hacker After Dark. Tonight we find ourselves 16 days away. From the National Football League draft, the Jaguars, five picks in the top 116 selections. That includes a 17th pick in round number one. And the man making those selections for the Jacksonville Jaguars will be general manager Trent Baalke, who is entering as the full-time GM his fourth draft with the Jacksonville Jaguars. So I thought for the next three nights, tonight, tomorrow, and Thursday, we are going to review the previous three years of drafts beginning tonight with 2021, and we're going to talk about the good, the bad, and the ugly, because the narrative in this city is Trent Baalke is terrible at drafting. Well, let's go back and review, and we'll begin tonight with the 2021 draft class that comes up in just a bit. Also, guest lineup tonight. Speaking of the draft, one of our guys when it comes to the NFL draft, we've had this man on for years, my buddy Ryan Roberts, Rise and Draft. That's the letter N, riseanddraft.com. We will have Ryan on in less than 20 minutes to talk about Jaguar free agency and what that now means for the Jaguars at pick 17. We'll certainly look at wide receiver, We'll certainly look at defensive back. Also coming up towards the top of the 9 o'clock hour, Cecil Shorts, former Jaguar wide receiver, former Texan wide receiver. I want to talk Stephon Diggs to Houston. I want to talk about what some of the other AFC South teams did. And Cecil Shorts lives in Houston, Texas. So he's seen a lot of A.D. Mitchell. He's seen a lot of Brian Thomas. He's a former wide receiver that played seven years in the league. So I'm going to ask Cecil Shorts about the two wide receivers being most linked to the Jaguars at number 17. Brian Thomas from LSU, A.D. Mitchell of Texas. So we'll talk about all of that with Cecil Shorts. That comes up towards the top of the 9 o'clock hour. We got a full slate of NBA action tonight. We got a full slate of Major League Baseball action, a full slate of NHL action as well. It is a very busy night in the sports world, and congratulations to UConn. Unfortunately for Florida Gator fans, you are now no longer the latest back-to-back champion in March Madness. UConn now has that mantle. UConn, the champion of last year, defended it this year, won every game by double digits. They were dominant every game by double digits. So now UConn takes their place, I believe, as the eighth team ever to go back-to-back in the NCAA tournament. We're with you till 10 o'clock. We got a lot to do. In Jacksonville, as always, we are glad you are with us. Every night here on Hacker After Dark, we do kick it off with a big deal of the night. And Dylan Denmark. Let's do that right now. Time now for the big deal of the night. What's the big deal? What is the big deal? It is a big deal. On Hacker After Dark. Okay. There's a narrative about Jaguar general manager Trent Baalke. And I will not throw stones in a glass house. I tend to agree with this narrative. And I've probably said it a few times myself. Free agency wise, I think Baalke has gotten a passing grade in now four years on the job as Jaguar general manager. Has he had some misses in free agency? Of course. But he's had far more hits 
Christian Kirk, Evan Ingram, Foyer Lewican, Zay Jones I would classify as a hit. Brandon Sheriff is a hit to an extent. Uh, so I, I have no issue. Roy Robertson Harris is probably a hit. I have no issue with Trent Baalke in free agency. He's had some misses, right? Obviously, Shaq Griffin was a miss. Foley Fadakasi was probably a miss. But by and large, I would give Balky a passing grade when it comes to free agents. Where he loses me and where I believe he loses most of you is in the draft. His drafts, if memory serves, have left a lot to be desired. So, over the next three nights, we're going to look at the Trent Baalke drafts here in Jacksonville. Now, I'm not counting 2020. Was he on the staff in 2020? Yes, he was. But he was not the general manager. The buck didn't stop with him. Dave Caldwell controlled the draft in 2020. So, I'm not going to give Baalke grief for that because that draft was arguably the worst draft in the history of the Jaguar franchise. I'm going to start Balky's clock in 2021 and go from there. So that's what we're going to do tonight. We're going to review Trent Balky as the Jaguar GM in the 2021 draft. Did he get a passing grade? Because now all of these guys are entering, entering year number four, right? I think entering year four, you probably know what the draft class is all about. It's hard to judge last year. Two years ago, you have a pretty good idea, but certainly three years ago, you pretty much know. Did the general manager do a good job, or did he do the opposite of that? So let's take a look. Obviously, the number one pick in the draft was Trevor Lawrence. Uh, That's a hit. Any way you slice it, that's a hit. Now, my Boston Terrier sitting at home chewing on her treat right now because she probably just went potty outside. She could have drafted Trevor Lawrence number one in the 2021 draft. I'm not sure if I'm going to give credit to Trent Baalke for making a pick that my mother could have made or that anybody could have made that doesn't know really anything about the draft process. No offense. I love you, Ma, but you're just not a draft Nick like a lot of people. So do you give credit to Baalke for Lawrence? I tend not to because, again, anybody could have made that pick. Having said that, Trevor Lawrence is a good player. He's been worth the number one pick. Has he lived up to expectation? Well, that's where you probably say no. But again, we've had this conversation. It would have been hard for Trevor Lawrence to live up to the generational status that he was given. It would have been hard for Trevor Lawrence to live up to the, quote, can't miss status that he was given. I think Trevor Lawrence is a good quarterback. I'm happy he's here. And I think that was a good pick. Where I start grading Balky is after that in the 2021 draft. Travis Etienne, that's a hit. That's a good pick. Travis Etienne's a good running back. Travis Etienne is one of the best playmakers on this team. Travis Etienne is a guy that the Jaguars took. Remember all the talk about them wanting Kadarius Toney? And then they end up taking Etienne because Toney uh, luckily went before Etienne. Thank goodness he did. I will give you a check mark, Trent Baalke, in the thumbs up column for Travis Etienne. One nothing in the good for Trent Baalke in the 2021 draft. Tyson Campbell with the first pick in round two. That's a hit. Tyson Campbell's a good player. Has he had some injury problems? Yes. Has he lived up to maybe the expectation he had coming into last year? No. I think injuries probably had something to do with that. But the reason he had a lot of expectations is the 2022 season that he had. It was good. Tyson Campbell's fine. He got off to a slow start, but Tyson Campbell is a number one corner in this league. There are certainly not 30 corners that are better than Tyson Campbell. And finding a guy like that in round number two, that's a hit. I give Trent Baalke a checkmark for Tyson Campbell. That's 2-0 in the 2021 draft. Walker Little in the second round. Well, right now, you'd probably have to say that's a miss, right? I mean, if you look at the projected starting offensive line for the Jaguars, Cam Robinson, Ezra Cleveland, Mitch Morse, Brandon Sheriff, and Anton Harrison, you don't see Walker Whittle there. 
Is he a good swing tackle? Yeah, I guess. But you draft somebody number 45 overall in the second round, and in year four, they're not a projected starter for you? That's probably a miss. Look, I like Walker Whittle. I think he's a good player. I think he's very good depth. But I tend to agree. He's probably not as good as Cam Robinson. He's probably not as good as Anton Harrison. So a second rounder in year four that's likely sitting on the bench unless an injury occurs, you probably put an X with that. So 2-1 in favor of the good for Trent Baalke. Andre Sisco in round number three. I'd say that's probably a hit right now. A third rounder for Andre Sisco, a guy coming off an ACL when they drafted him out of Syracuse. I think sisco has been fine. Has shown a lot of flashes, has done some nice things. Is he the all-around safety you'd like as far as top 10, top 15 caliber in the league? I don't think so. Top 15, there might be an argument. I don't think he's in the top 10 by any stretch of the imagination. But Andre Sisco, to me, is a good starting caliber safety in the National Football League. And to find a guy like that in round number three, I'll give Trent Baalke credit. I put a check mark there. 3-1 in favor of Balky. Now is when we start having problems in the 2021 draft. And to be fair, the first three rounds are supposed to be hits. Round four, yeah, you're probably supposed to get decent players. Five, six, and seven, it's a crapshoot. So you have to take that into account. But these next two guys are flat-out misses in round four. With the... 106th pick in the draft in 2021, the Jaguars took Jay Tefele. That's a miss. That's a big miss. Uh, one of the hot, was that the number one fourth round pick? I think it was the first fourth round pick in 2021. You need to perform being drafted that high, being the first pick on day three. Jay Tefele didn't last here, but a couple of years. He basically had a cup of coffee here. That was not a good selection by Trent Balky. So 4-2 in the good for Balky right now. Jordan Smith, another guy that coming off some injury concerns in college. He was the 121st pick in the 2021 draft. Did basically nothing. Now he had injury problems, but you got to take that into account, right? Those are two fourth-round picks, two decently high fourth-round picks that you got nothing out of on the D-line. Jay Tefele and Jordan Smith. So both of those I would chalk up as misses for Trent Baalke. That's 4-3. Two picks left. Luke Farrell, you get him in round number, uh, what was that, round five? Pick 145. He's been here three years. He's likely to be here a fourth year. Anytime a fifth round pick can remain on the roster for going on four years, that's a hit. It's not a big hit. It's not a home run. It's a Maybe an infield single, but a fifth-round pick that's lasted on your roster as long as Luke Farrell has, you can't complain about that. So 5-3 in, in Balky's column, and then finally Jalen Camp was a sixth-round pick in 2021 out of Georgia Tech. Did nothing. I don't even know if he played in a regular season game when he was here. That's a miss. Again, sixth round, take that for what it's worth. Very rarely do you find sixth-rounders that achieve it happens, right? Some guys are named Tom Brady, but they are few and far between. So there you go. 2021 draft review. Trent Baalke's first draft as GM of the Jags. Remember, the narrative out there from a lot of you, including myself, quite frankly, is that Trent Baalke isn't any good at drafting players. If you take the nine guys drafted in 2021, I would say Baalke wins 5-4 as far as impact guys. Now, you'd like it to be 6-3 or 7-2 when you draft nine players, but I would say five of them. Trevor Lawrence, depending if you want to give credit to Balky or not, ETN, Campbell, Cisco, and Farrell are hits. The misses in that draft, you got to put Walker Little in that category with Jay Tefele, Jordan Smith, and Jalen Camp. That's not a great percentage. I'll grant you that. You draft nine guys, only five have been hits, only five have been good players. I don't know. I would think you'd want to see that number be higher. So I'm not giving Balky a lot of praise for the 2021 draft. 
but he wasn't dreadful. It wasn't terrible. They found five guys that four years later are contributing. And for that matter, Walker Little is contributing. He's just not starting. And for a second-round pick to not be starting heading into year four, that's why I put a miss on Walker Little. So six guys remain from that draft class, five that I would consider good picks. Walker Little can't find the field as a second-rounder. I got some questions about that. The other three, Jalen Camp, Jay Tefele, Jordan Smith, were outright misses. Here is the bottom line when it comes to not only that draft review, what we're going to do tomorrow with the 2022 draft, and what we're going to do Thursday with the 2023 draft. Trent Baalke needs to draft better. He's been very good in round one, right? Trevor Lawrence, Travis Etienne, Trayvon Walker, Anton Harrison, Devin Lloyd, the jury's still out. But I would give Balky a definite above passing grade in round one. Where he starts losing people is in rounds two, three, and four. And general managers in this league, it is a requirement to be good in round one. If you don't get good players in round one of the NFL draft, what are you doing being an NFL general manager? I asked myself that about Dave Caldwell year after year after year when he was here. Gene Smith, the same thing. Ineptitude by both of those guys until Balky arrived. So Balky is doing well in round one. He is simply not doing well in rounds two, three, and four, and you see evidence of that in the 2021 draft with Walker Whittle at pick 45, who can't find the field as a starter now coming into year four in the league. That's the bottom line. He needs to draft better, but it hasn't been dreadful, or at least 2021 wasn't dreadful. You'd have to give it a C, maybe a C plus. It's not an A by any stretch of the imagination, but having said that, it's not an F either. 16 days before the NFL draft this year, Balky has a 17th pick in round number one. Again, the Jaguars will have five selections in the top 116 picks. Let's talk to a man that I've talked draft with for years here on Hacker After Dark. He does a fantastic job. His name is Ryan Roberts. His website, Rise in Draft, the letter N, riseindraft.com. We'll talk a little Jaguar free agency, what that now means for what the Jags are going to do in the draft 16 nights from now, and we're going to have a heavy focus on wide receiver and corner. Because that is what everybody's talking about. Wide out and corner. Does Ryan Roberts agree with that? I'll have him tell you next on a Tuesday night here in Jacksonville, Florida. It's Hacker After Dark on 1010XL and 92.5 FM. Now, another classic moment in Jags history. There's the snap. Brunel standing in the pocket. Has time. He's on the run to his left. He's got Keenan all alone. Keenan makes the catch at the 10. Tight ropes down the sideline. And the referee signal touchdown. A 47-yard touchdown pass. Jaguars pride forever. 1010XL. Hacker here for Awaken 180 Weight Loss. Let me say it again. Let me shout it. Awaken 180 Weight Loss. You know what that company's doing for my life? Doing for my family? I've lost 45 pounds since February 20th. Think about that for a second. 45 pounds in just over six and a half weeks. Why? Because Awaken 180 Weight Loss works. It is the best program I have ever been on, and trust me, I've been on a lot of them. I'm living proof. If you dedicate yourself, if you listen to the folks at Awaken 180, you will drop the weight. Do yourself a favor. Do your family a favor. If it's time for you to drop some pounds like it is for me and was for me, go to Awaken180WeightLoss.com. Awaken180WeightLoss.com or call 844-346-1800. That's 844-346-1800. 45 pounds in six weeks. Thank you. Awaken 180 Weight Loss. Baloo for Shenactory Chiropractic. They've helped me get rid of my headaches, and pain in my neck and back. Are you suffering from an auto accident? What about TMJ pain? Headaches associated with jaw clenching? grinding of the teeth, or stress-related disorders, Shenatri Chiropractic has a physical therapist on staff for rehabilitation, quality chiropractic care, 
dry needling massage and acupuncture. Call 743-6700 or go to ShanatriDC.com. Get in the zone, AutoZone. Welcome to AutoZone. What are you working on today? I think my battery's dead. With free battery testing and charging, we can help you get back on the road. Get in the zone, AutoZone. So what if I need a new one? We have the right Duralast battery for you, only at AutoZone. Get in the zone, AutoZone. And what about my old battery? We can recycle it right here at America's number one battery destination. Get in the zone, AutoZone. Restrictions apply. Mueller Air Conditioning presents Are You Cool? Today's challenger, a corporate management manager from Jacksonville, Florida. Meet Les Blankston. Yeah, hi, Bob. That is a remarkably beige suit there, Les. Tell us, why are you on the show? <laughs> well, I just replaced my old air conditioner with a new one from Bueller, and I'm just so comfortable these days. I wondered, am I cool now? Let's find out, Les. Go ahead and spin the wheel. <laughs> That's right, Les. By upgrading your old AC to a more energy-efficient model from Bueller Air Conditioning, you'll save money, save energy, and proudly show your family that you are cool. <laughs> Do you think I should get a mohawk? Uh, pace yourself, Les. Stay cooler with Bueller. Visit BuellerAir.com. After a storm passes, the assessment of the aftermath begins. Sometimes damage to the roof is obvious, like leaks or missing shingles, broken or damaged gutters, or tree debris. But storm damage is not always as clearly present. Universal Roofing Contracting is here to help and will come assess your roof for any hidden damage. Call Universal Roof to schedule your free roof inspection at 855-ROOF-HELP or visit universalroof.com. License number CCC057165, CBC1258484. 1010XL celebrates athletic and academic greatness. Listen for the High School Scholar Athlete, Wednesdays on the Frangie Show. Brought to you by Southeast Orthopedic Specialists. And the Plumbers and Pipe Fitters Local Union 234 on 1010XL. Attention veterans, if you have a VA loan, you need to listen to this, especially if your current rate is higher than 6.5%. Now is the time to take advantage of the federal government's VA Streamline Refinance Program. With my friends at Loan Pronto, you can. Go to LoanPronto.com. Prosser here, and Loan Pronto has fixed rate APRs in the five. You can drop your rate now. Lower your payment with no income documentation and no appraisal. Do it at LoanPronto.com. Their all-digital platform makes it easy. They can even cover your closing costs. If you need cash now, Loan Pronto can get you up to 100% of your home value. You can pay off all your credit cards or other debt and save as much as $1,000 a month. Call Loan Pronto now at 904-999-1508 or get a 30-second rate quote at LoanPronto.com. Ask about Streamline VA loans. No income doc and no appraisal. Loan Pronto, 999-1508 or LoanPronto.com. Equal housing lender, NMLS 1661781, subject to lender approval. 15,000 workers. I'm Brian Rose from Remedy Staffing. We survey 15,000 blue-collar workers each year to better understand what drives quality and dependability in our workforce. The survey shows when looking for a new job, the initial pay rate, job security, and safety while working are the most important factors for hourly workers. If you're an employer and would like to learn more about the voice of the blue-collar worker, please call us at 904-528-1933. It doesn't get any better than live country music. Enjoy Daryl Ray at Players Grill Miramar this Friday at 7 p.m. with discount cocktails while the local star rocks out. Players Grill Miramar, where the neighborhood meets. This is my bar. E.T. here, and it's time for the Taste of Golf at TPC Sawgrass, April 24th. Join me for fine cuisine from chefs from the top golf clubs in our area, craft cocktails, games, and unique auction items. This is one of the most charitable events in our area. Come network with a sophisticated audience who is passionate about golf and its values, all while impacting the youth in our community. All proceeds benefit First Team North Florida. For tickets, go to tasteofgolf.com. Come on, somebody. 1010XL is presented by Farrah & Farrah, exclusive injury law firm of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Protecting you and your family. Call 396-5555. Jacksonville. Let's ring up another guest on the All-Pro Roofing phone line. 
Back here on 1010XL at 92.5 FM in the city of Jacksonville. We are glad you are with us. The NFL Draft, two weeks from Thursday night. Of course, the Jaguars hold the 17th pick in round number one. They have five selections in the top 116. Those five guys need to hit. Trent balky has got to do a better job in rounds two, three, and four this upcoming draft. With that being said, Ryan Roberts is certainly one of our guys and has been for years here on 1010XL. Rise and Draft is where you can follow him on the website and on social media. And Ryan's always kind enough to give us some time here on 1010XL. Ryan, how you doing? I'm good, man. I'm good. It's the best time of the year. The work's all done. We're just kind of sitting back and letting people freak out about rumors and, you know, and um, just kind of some bad information that's out there right now. You know, it's kind of the guessing game this time of year. So it's always fun. It's always fun when the work's done. You just kind of get to relax a little bit. And it's interesting you say that, and we're going to dive into the Jags, but I'm curious. The draft is two Mm -hmm. weeks from Thursday. If the NFL said, nope, we're drafting tonight, drop everything, go into your war room, we're drafting right now. Could teams do that? Are they ready? I mean, the Chicago Bears are, I would say, right? Because, I mean, they have a little bit of time, you know, between picks, so they've got to figure it out. But, I mean, for the most part, cross checks are pretty much, at this point, all finalized and everything. I mean, this is really where the board gets stacked, you know, and, and you really kind of get that more kind of the, the vertical board and kind of what things look like. I mean, it's it's a lot more – it's a lot more attentive than kind of people paint it as, right? Like, at the end of the day – teams aren't building a top 350 board like some websites are doing. They're building a much more finite, really specific board because they have at this point have all the information they need from obviously the player evals, the cross checks and all that stuff are all done, but they've been digging into these players. They've been talking to them. They bring them for bring, bringing them in for 30 visits. They've been having zoom calls. They have all the information. So I think for the most part, they have all the information they need. These last couple of weeks are just more about finalizing thoughts, finalizing boards, and making sure they're comfortable about where they're at. Ryan Roberts, riseanddraft.com. All right, Ryan, you and I haven't spoken since free agency, and the Jaguars yep. were one of the most active teams in free agency. They brought in a lot of guys. They had some guys leave, obviously, Calvin Ridley among them. But when you look at what the Jaguars have accomplished so far with the guys they brought in, how do you feel that affects what they're going to do in a couple of weeks at the draft? I, I mean, it kind of just finalizes my thoughts, to be honest. I mean, I think two of the most important positions that we've spoken about, you know, kind of recently is wide receiver and corner. And I think that when you talk about just kind of the movement in free agency and defections in free agency, I think it just kind of finalized everything for me. You know, in my mind, it's like, you know, what are they going to do at pick 17? As it currently stands, I would be kind of surprised if it wasn't a wide receiver or corner. You know, you lose Calvin Ridley. I know they brought in – you know, I, I know they brought in uh, what's his name from Buffalo, Gabe Davis, you know, kind of be a little bit of a fixture in there, hopefully, and kind of reignite what Buffalo saw him early on in his career coming out of UCF. But I, I think right now, wide receiver is obviously a massive need. Darius Williams went back to the Rams in free agency. Who I know was a pretty solid player for the most part for Jacksonville. So cornerback, wide receiver, it just kind of finalized like first round mock drift. That's the two positions that I'm I'm forecasting for Jacksonville leading up to the big day. And it's interesting, too, because I know the last time you and I talked, we were talking about Jackson Powers Johnson and the interior offensive line, but then they go out and sign Mitch Morse. They re-sign Ezra Cleveland, and now no one's really talking about the interior offensive line. That's what free agency can do. All right, you mentioned wide receiver and corner. Let's begin with corner. Now, Doug Peterson made a little bit of news a couple of weeks ago we thought Darnell Savage, the free agent from Green Bay, was going to be the mm-hmm. Rayshon Jenkins replacement at safety. Apparently, that's not the way the Jaguars see it. The Jaguars are going to use him more as the nickel, so that means your yeah. top three corners now are Tyson Campbell, Ronald Darby, and Darnell Savage with Antonio right. Johnson replacing Rayshon Jenkins at safety. Do you believe the Jaguars at those top three corner spots, Savage, Darby, Campbell, do they need to go corner at 17, in your opinion? Is that their biggest need? I, I think that it's between wide receiver and corner. Like I said, like if they chose to take a corner at 17, I would be completely fine with it. I would actually welcome it. I think that Tyson Campbell, I know he was a little banged up this past year. It was a little bit of a regression year, just kind of overall, but he still has obviously all the tools to be that type of guy for Jacksonville. I know he's played pretty well for the most part throughout the duration of his early career so far. So I think you're good with Campbell. Ronald Darby, you know, I mean, he's been on several teams at this point. Like he's just a stopgap at this point, right? Like he's not a guy that, you're depending upon long-term or probably even at a high volume short-term. Like he's just kind of that guy that 
is going to allow you to at least have a competent name in the room. And Darnell Savage, like, we'll see. You know, like, it's a wait-and-see conversation for me because Darnell has played mostly on the roof, you know, for Green Bay. Like, he was mostly a true safety. I know when he was at Maryland coming out, he did play a little bit of slot corner. So, I mean, I guess it makes sense that he's kind of dabbling in both areas. And obviously, he's a very gifted athlete. There's no doubt about that. So, maybe you can get the best out of him. But I think overall, there is still a massive needed outside corner. And if they opt for a guy like a Quinion Mitchell, if he's there at 17, or Nate Wiggins, or a, you know, a Tyrion Arnold from Alabama, you know, whoever it ends up being, I think that that would be a very good pick. Because I do think that that is one of their top two needs, cornerback and wide receiver. Ryan Roberts, riseanddraft.com. That's rise, the letter N, draft.com. All right, Ryan, from corner, you mentioned Quinion Mitchell, Tyrion Arnold of Alabama. Those appear to be the top two and in most mock drafts, not all, but most, Mitchell and Arnold are gone before yep. 17. Let's hypothetically say that's the case on the 25th of April. If Mitchell mm-hmm. and Arnold are gone, who is your third guy or who is the best fit remaining for the Jaguars at corner at 17? Yeah, I mean, so for me at corner, I, I, I think at 17, Nate Wiggins would be a guy out of Clemson that I would be very excited about because I think that he brings – because I think the conversation is going to be there, in my opinion, Ryan, is like there's going to be three guys that people are going to talk about if they're if they're talking corner 17. One is going to be uh, is going to be Nate Wiggins, who I just mentioned out of Clemson, who's a long, athletic, can run for days, incredibly twitched up, short, airy, quick. This guy, you have Cooper DeGene out of Iowa, who's kind of a jack of all trades, like can kind of play all over the place, but he is a little bit scheme specific outside, like he's more of a zone heavy type of corner. You know, in comparative to like what a Nate Wiggins is, is like a true man corner. And then you're going to talk about Kool-Aid McKinstry. Now, it's a great con- – out of Alabama. And it's a great conversation because Kool-Aid is, out of the three of them, by far the most steady and consistent playing press man. Like, that is what he – he majors in that. Like, he is a very good press man corner. Other systems, you know, he's maybe not – at least coverage variations. Like, he's not quite as effective. I would personally offer Nate Wiggins because although – if Jacksonville, let's say, and I don't know as much about the scheme, obviously, as you do, but, you know, if they're playing a ton of press man, for instance, right, I think that a lot of people would gravitate towards Kool-Aid, but I would argue that in the day and age of how the NFL is in 2024, you're not playing one just coverage variation all day. Like, you need to be a little bit of a versatile piece on the back end, and I think Nate Wiggins could do everything. Like, the major thing about Nate is he needs to gain some weight and play strength, but that stuff, I can I can fix that, right? Like, that's a, it's an off-season in a – in a strength and conditioning program in the NFL, I can't teach four to eight speed. I can't teach length. I can't teach just the ability to change direction that this young man has. So I look at him and I say, he could definitely play press man as his play strengths improves. He's got the length. He's got the reach. He can play off man today in the NFL and he can play zone. Like he can do everything. So for me at 17, if that's my pick between the three, I would opt for Nate Wiggins because I think whether you are a, heavy press man team, you're an off man team, you're a zone team, you're a zone match team, like whatever coverage you kind of lie to mostly, I think that he can present the highest upside to play any of them. Ryan Roberts, riseanddraft.com. Now that's the cornerback situation. We'll re- we focus on that in a moment. Now let's go to wide receiver. The top three wide receivers in the Jaguar room right now, Christian Kirk, Gabe Davis, Zay Jones, obviously with the departure of Ridley. Parker Washington is here, and people don't really talk about it, and I'm guilty of that as well. Devin DuVernay is a much more accomplished wide receiver than Jamal Agnew was. Agnew was a a DB, the transition wide receiver. Well, DuVernay is an all-pro returner that is a true wide receiver, so I don't think people need to forget that DuVernay is here as well. Having said that, how big is wide receiver for the Jaguars, Ryan? And at 17, the two names that we hear constantly, Brian Thomas Jr., A.D. Mitchell, how do you assess those yep. two? I, I think they're exactly, at least from a physical skill po- skill set perspective, I think that both Brian Thomas, and I do prefer Brian Thomas compared to A.D. Mitchell. I do actually have some concerns about A.D. But regardless – they are what Jacksonville needs at wide receiver if we're bringing in a wide receiver at 17. Because I look at that, I look at the depth chart and I say there's a lot of good secondary pass catchers. There's a lot of guys that I think could also feast in the slot. They could be short to intermediate separators. I mean, you know, you, you mentioned Devin Duvernay, who's a short space type of guy. He's got long speed, but like for the most part, he's an underneath separator, a guy that's going to win after the catch. 
You mentioned Parker Washington. He's kind of got the similar style. Zay Jones is not a fast guy, but he's a little bit of an inside out guy that can run routes and kind of create some separation. And then Christian Kirk is, again, that short to intermediate separator that can make some things happen after the catch, you know, when he gets when he gets an opportunity. So I think that for the most part, the only guy vertically oriented that is on Jacksonville's um, Jacksonville's roster right now, at least from an outside perspective is Gabe Davis, and Gabe Davis is a very inconsistent wide receiver, which we saw with Buffalo the last two years. So I think you need to find some length outside. I think you need to find some vertical ability outside. And when you talk about Brian Thomas Jr. and A.D. Mitchell at both 6'2 plus with length for days and 4'3 speed, that is the dynamic that you need to bring to Jacksonville if you're going to take him at 17. Ryan, the talk between corner and wide receiver, and look, I've had a lot of guys on. I certainly value your opinion. That's why we have you on every single year, so I want to ask you directly. I've been sure. told that, all right, if you need a corner, you need a wide receiver, maybe take corner at 17 because wide receiver's deeper, and you might be able mm-hmm. to find a good player at 48 in round number two. Do you agree with that? Right. I actually don't. <laughs> I actually don't agree with that. Um, I, I think that – so – in a vacuum, do I agree that you could find a good wide receiver 48? Yes, absolutely. I mean, there's a there's an opportunity to maybe get a, you know, Keon Coleman's fallen a little bit out of Florida State. He's kind of an outside-oriented receiver. You have Lyle McConkey, who's a little bit more of like the the former that I was talking about, of like the short intermediate separators with some speed. Like, you can find a good player at 48, but I don't know if you're going to find the right type of receiver for, again, what I think Jacksonville needs. You know, like those, those guys that are – tall long and explosive outside those guys get picked early right they, they get picked super early so i actually think that you might have a better opportunity in my opinion to get a good corner at 48 you know like whether that is a tj tampa out of iowa state or a cam hart out of notre dame like i still think that there's a it's a deep, it's a pretty deep corner class as well and i would argue though that the dynamic that jacksonville needs those types of players get picked early man they, they come off the board very quickly and i don't know if you're going to find 6-3 with 4-3 speed at pick 48. I think if you want a difference maker with an outside skill set, I think that should be the pick at 17. Like, for me personally, if Brian Thomas Jr. is there, that's probably my pick. Like, it, just, it straight up is because I think that that kid has every variable, every tangible skill set to be a difference maker at the next level. Think DJ Chark with much more physicality and consistency keep tracking the ball down the field. Like, that's what I see – in a guy like Brian Thomas. So I would actually prefer the wide receiver, outside-oriented, big playability at 17, and then find the best possible corner that you can at 48 because I still think that cornerback also has a lot of depth to the class. You said you had some concerns about A.D. Mitchell. What are some of your concerns? Yeah. Uh, I mean, one, and this is like this is a very nuanced conversation because I, I very much oppose – anybody that just scouts a box score, right? Like that is, I'm a film guy. I always have been. I'm not a huge analytics guy and I'm definitely not a box score scouter, but ultimately a guy that talented, a guy that is six, two plus a guy that is long, a guy that is super explosive, former high, you know, high caliber recruit that started his career at Georgia. Very simply, why were you more productive, man? <laughs> he had eight games last year where he had below 50 yards receiving at Texas with a lot of weapons where he was getting a lot of one-on-one matchups with a pass with a passing savant offensive coordinator in Steve Sarkeesian, obviously he's his head coach. Like, why were you not more productive? You know, it gives me the vibes of I don't know if you ever see Moneyball, but like when Brad Pitt says, like, if he's such a good hitter, why doesn't he hit good? Right? <laughs> yeah, like and, yeah. and and that's what I, that's what I'm thinking with Brian Thomas. It's like this kid's so physically gifted, he looks like a million dollars. You watch him just run around and you're like, why isn't that kid? more dominant than he, than he is right now. Why isn't he more productive? And then I'm watching the film, and I have some concerns over a little bit lackadaisical at times, a little bit of a loafing on the backside of plays, like doesn't seem to run everything out. And then I think the play strength still needs to take a step forward. Like I don't think he wins consistently through contact, especially like in the last game of the season, you know, where, where you're watching him. And it's just like, you know, just he has a chance to make a couple plays, and I just don't think that he's matched the physicality as much down the course of the stretch against Washington, you know, in this final game of the season. So play strength and just kind of lack of daisicalness and lack of production, like those things together kind of give me some pause because that kid physically is about as impressive a wide receiver prospect that we've seen over the last couple of years, at least just from a height, weight, speed perspective. So why aren't you better? Why haven't you dominated more? The lack of production and consistency does give me a lot of pause. Final moments, Ryan Roberts, riseanddraft.com. I agree with you about Brian Thomas. If he's there, 
that's probably yeah. the where where I'm going with one caveat, and I've been on this for the last couple of weeks. Okay. I didn't think there was a chance that Jared Verse would be there at 17, and quite frankly, I yeah. still don't. But mm-hmm. every but the, as these mock drafts come out, Ryan, the more mock drafts that come out, Jared Verse is there about half the time. And I got to tell you, man, if Verse is there at 17 on April 25th, and I have the idea of Trayvon Walker, Josh Allen, Eric Armstead, and Jared Verse on my D line, <laughs> that yeah. would be awfully, awfully tempting for me. Well, I would say this about the verse conversation. Verse is my top ranked edge in this class. I think he's a top 10 overall player. I think he's the most underrated prospect maybe in this class overall. Like people never mock him there. You know, like, like you're saying, like there's a lot, there's a lot more mock drafts that have him closer to 20 than they do to 10 at this point. Like it happens. And I think that what we're seeing is one, we're overthinking Jared verse a little bit. I mean, that kid's an elite level athlete. Is he the bendiest guy of all time? No, but the speed, the power is really, real the production is real and that kid just has a lot of upside man i mean we forget about him that he's only been playing power five football for two years you know like he was at albany before that and before that he was a very underrated recruit and a guy that apparently played defense in high school so there's still a lot of untapped potential with jared verse i think that the the trouble with this class and why he seems to be falling in mock dress specifically is because one it's a very offensive heavy draft you know in that first 10 picks like there's a possibility that all top 10 picks are offensive players. <laughs> I mean, you have a heavy class of quarterbacks at the top, wide receivers, offensive tackles. Like, it is a silly year to need those positions. Like, it is incredible depth at each one of those spots. So I think that some defensive players are nasty just getting pushed down the board a little bit. And then the conversation comes to Dallas Turner, Alabama, more of a stand-up, twitchier rusher, a little bit of a you know lighter build. You have Jared Verse. You have Leatu Latu out of UCLA, who's a little bit more of a technician, maybe not as powerful, maybe not as bendy as Dallas Turner, but kind of a, a good blend overall. Like, what do you prefer? If Dallas Turner goes off the board first, I think that one of those two could slide, potentially. You move down a little board, move down the board a little bit. And then you could be in the situation where if one team likes Leatu Latu and his neck, his neck injury from the past checks out, then maybe Jared Verse ends up being the third edge off the board. So I think it really depends on what the edge hierarchy looks like, but you might be tasked with that difficult decision, man, because on paper, Jackson, Jacksonville doesn't have a major need on the edge. Like you said, like you got some, like some dudes, you know, and, and guy, and you know, Trayvon Walker took a nice step forward and Josh Allen is a potential superstar, you know, after the season that he just had, I know his long-term future, you still need to figure out the contract and everything, but overall it's not a, it's not a massive need on paper, but Jared Verse might be the double player that makes you second guess or at least think about it because he at pick number 17, would be a tremendous value in this draft, obviously. Great minds think alike, and apparently you and I do as well. That's my guy if he's there. If he's not there, I'm on board with Brian Thomas because you got to help Trevor Lawrence, no question about that. Ryan Roberts, Rise in Draft. You can follow him on social media, Rise, the letter in Draft. You can also check out the website. Ryan, I know you're busy, man. Thank you as always. Let's do it again after the draft, and we'll see where the dust settles when it comes to the Jaguars. Absolutely, brother. Thank you as always for having me. It's very appreciated. Now you can watch 1010XL. Oh, you've worked in television? No, but I watch a lot of it. Search 1010XL video, all one word, on YouTube to watch shows, podcasts, and more. Winter time at the Blue Crab Crab House. You know what that means. Time for oysters. Buy them by the tray, broiled, half shell with Romano cheese, wine topping, or fried. And of course, each and every Wednesday, $1 oysters at the Blue Crab Crab House. Serving Northeast Florida since 1996. Make reservations by calling 260-CRAB. Jacksonville's best, the Blue Crab Crab House, off of San Jose on Jewington Creek Road. Hi, this is Dave Barker. Want to grow your hair back? IHRS, right here in Jacksonville, is the only hair transplant clinic in the Southeast to offer multi-unit hair grafting and the 45-minute PRP treatments. Grow your hair back. Call now for a free in-person evaluation. 904-777-IHRS. 904-777-4477. Or visit hairforme.com. Have you tried golfing at the improved Cimarron Golf Club? If you haven't, tell you what, you're missing out on the best deal in Jacksonville. Now, many of you have received a postcard in the mail, and of course, if you bring that with you, $45 plus tax to play. That includes a cart, lunch, and a beer at the brand new Stone Barrel Cap House. Now, 
go to the website that is CimarronGolfClub.com and sign up for the Wild One Loyalty Program. That's the Wild One Loyalty Program and get all of these specials emailed to you from Cimarron. Bet, bet, bet on the ball game. Get your money down. Money lines, totals, and parlays. We're cashing tickets all around. It's baseball betting season, and VEASAN's MLB betting guide is a home run for bettors. Download your free special edition of the guide, featuring a betting preview of the Atlanta Braves and Tampa Bay Rays at 1010XL.com. That's 1010XL.com. Catch the Jacksonville Jaguars every day. Jaguars today from the Jacksonville Orthopedic Institute Studios. With Mike Dempsey and Fat Tony. Talking teal every weekday from 10 to noon. Jaguars today on 1010XL. Mortgage rates have lowered going into this spring selling season. Have you had problems selling your home in the past? Are you looking for a promise, a solution? I'm here to give it for you. It's Chad and Sandy and chadandsandy.com, the real estate experts I trust and recommend with the sale of your home or mine for that matter. Maybe you want maximum equity or perhaps you're worried about costly repairs or upgrades. Chad and Sandy deliver this simple promise. They guarantee your home sold at an agreed upon price and deadline or they will buy it. You have literally nothing to lose. Take Pete in Lakeshore. I was in a pickle. I heard Chad and Sandy on the radio and called because I needed to cash out on a rental property fast. I was struggling to rent it. I called Chad and Sandy, and I got an offer for full asking price within days. These guys made it easy and delivered big time results. Call the agents. I trust and recommend to sell your home. Chad and Sandy, they guarantee to sell your home or they will buy it. Find out more at chadandsandy.com or call 414-6200. Picking here, the Borland Groover Foundation proudly presents the annual March to Get Screen 5K race and one mile fun run. Sunday, April 14th, the race starts at 7 a.m. under the Fuller Warren Bridge. Their mission, raise awareness about colorectal cancer and related deaths. All proceeds benefit the Borland Groover Foundation. It's a nonprofit organization devoted to building a healthy and equitable community that is free from colon cancer. Visit BorlandGrooverFoundation.com for more. Without the ones like you, who work tirelessly to keep things running, everything would suddenly stop. Hospitals, factories, schools, and power plants, they all depend on you. No matter the weather, emergency, or time of day, you're the ones who get it done. At Granger, we're here for you with professional-grade industrial supplies. Count on real-time product availability and fast delivery. Call, clickgranger.com or just stop by. Granger for the ones who get it done. Test your aim to help local kids succeed. It's the 6th Annual Mackenzie Noel Wilson Foundation Clay Shoot to support the Boys and Girls Clubs of Northeast Florida and Mackenzie's Camp Deep Pond, Thursday, May 13th at Jack's Clay Target Sports. Get your team and the Boys and Girls Club take care of the rest. Ammo, cart, clays, breakfast bites, lunch, and goodies. Proceeds benefit 56 area clubs serving over 5,200 area kids every day. Go to bgcnf.org slash events. QC Kinetics announces the arrival of National Medical Director Dr. Mitchell Scheinkup, an acclaimed orthopedic surgeon with two decades of experience and extensive research in regenerative medicine. But I was one of the first orthopedic surgeons to do it, and at the same time, I integrated clinical research that's resulted in several publications that are really directing the future of regenerative medicine. I was drawn to QC Kinetics after I reviewed their protocols, and everything they were doing is consistent with my own approach. Today, Dr. Scheinkup leads the entire team of medical professionals at QC Kinetics, taking this exciting medical breakthrough to a whole new level. What we are doing at QC Kinetics is transforming lives. Get lasting joint pain relief. Call QC Kinetics now for your free consultation. This is the future of medicine. Call QC Kinetics, 904-274-5522. That's 904-274-5522. 904-274-5522. 1010XL is presented by Farrah and Farrah, exclusive injury law firm of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Protecting you and your family. Call 396 5555. Jacksonville. Hacker After Dark on 1010XL. 10 minutes before the 9 o'clock hour. We'll take you all the way up to 10 o'clock tonight, as we do every night of the week, Monday through Friday, right here. On Hacker After Dark, coming up in less than 15 minutes, former 
Jaguar wide receiver Cecil Shorts to talk a little AFC South, a little NFL draft as well. So Cecil Shorts coming up in less than 15 minutes. You know, some interesting news out of the UFL today. In case you don't know what the UFL is, that's that spring football league. And I've never been one to criticize professional spring football. I don't mind it. I know some people feel contractually obligated to rip it and it's not great and and we whatever to each his own some people like horse racing that's not my thing I'm a big NBA fan that's not some of your favorite things I know so I don't usually rip any particular sport just for the sake of ripping it I've never really understood that but I'm gonna rip this aspect of the UFL I get it but I think they're wrong because the ultimate goal is to get where to the National Football League. So you could argue the most popular player in the UFL right now is a kicker. A kicker by the name of Jake Bates, who plays for Michigan. Jake Bates in week one of the UFL hit a 64-yard field goal, but a timeout was called moments before the snap, so he had to do it over again. This was to win the game late in the fourth quarter. So what did he do? He then hit a second 64-yard field goal to win the game. Last week, Jake Bates hits a 62-yard field goal. That's 62 and 64 yarders. I don't care what league you're in. Spring football, winter football, football in Antarctica. You go back-to-back weeks of hitting a 62-yarder and a 64-yarder, you're going to get calls from the National Football League. But Mike Nolan, the head coach of this UFL team in Michigan, voiced his frustration earlier today. They're not supposed to do that, Nolan said, talking about NFL teams reaching out to Jake Bates or Bates' agent. Maybe it's a rumor, but I've heard some things the last few days... And I kind of said, well, let's make sure we nip that in the bud because, look, I want Jake to do well, and I want him to get a chance. I'd love to see him in the NFL, and no one right now can do him any good. So the best thing I can do is keep those away from him currently because it's not helping Jake, because I'm not helping Jake if I don't do that. That's Mike Nolan. Look, the ultimate goal is to get to the NFL. If I'm Jake Bates and I just hit two 60-yard field goals in back-to-back weeks, are you kidding me? Yeah, I'm going to take calls from NFL teams. And if I'm NFL teams looking for a kicker, oh, I don't know. There could potentially be one here in Jacksonville. I am certainly inquiring about a guy with that strong a leg. Again, I don't care what league you're in. You hit a 64-yarder to win a game, and then you come back with a 62-yarder a week later. You're going to get an opportunity in a camp. To me, there is absolutely no question about that. We mentioned yesterday teams reporting for off-season workouts. Every team with a first-year head coach has begun their off-season workout program. Every other team will begin, I believe, next Monday. That includes the Jacksonville Jaguars, who report to off-season workouts on Monday, April the 15th. Of course, the draft is April the 25th, and OTAs, off-season field activities, or on-the-field activities in the off-season begin in the month of May. I believe May 21st is the first OTA for the Jacksonville Jaguars. So on-the-field work is right around the corner. A lot has transpired in the AFC South. Stephon Diggs is a Houston Texan. Legereus Sneed is a Tennessee Titan. Of course, Eric Armstead, Gabe Davis, among others, are Jacksonville Jaguars. You could argue the AFC South was the most active division in football and free agency. What does all of it mean? Let's talk to a guy that played for not only the Jacksonville Jaguars, but he also played for the Houston Texans. I want to talk to Cecil Shorts about the AFC South, and I also want to spend some time with Cecil about Brian Thomas from LSU and about A.D. Mitchell from Texas. 
Those are the two wide receivers being linked most to Jacksonville in round one at pick 17. Cecil has seen both of them up close and personal. What does he think as a guy that played wide out for seven years in the league about Thomas of LSU and Mitchell from Texas? I'll ask him next. Cecil Shorts on a Tuesday night here on Hacker After Dark in the city of Jacksonville. And as always, we're glad you are with us. From the backyard to the ball yard. Let's have a ball. 1010XL, Jacksonville Sports Radio. Hacker here with another unbelievable stat. I'm now down 45 pounds in just six weeks with a Waken 180 weight loss. 45 pounds, and I basically just started the program. I wasn't always this walking advertisement for feeling good. Let's just say the struggle was real. Tried everything, programs, diets, and yes, even those injections. Sure, I lost a few pounds, but the results were so slow. Top that with not feeling myself, coupled with needing shots for the rest of my life? No thanks. Thank you. It's not just the 45-pound number. Even though, yeah, that's unbelievable. It's about life, man. I took little hack to SeaWorld last week. Walked around all day. No sweat. No being tired. Two months ago, I would have skipped out on that whole experience. If it's time for you to drop some weight like it was for me, do what I did. Go to Awaken180WeightLoss.com or call 844-346-1800. That's 844-346-1800. It's Awaken 180 Weight Loss. The 2024 draft is almost here. The Jaguars are now on the clock. Join us at Abraham Bank Stadium Thursday, April 25th for the official do Draft Party presented by Donovan Air Electric and Plumbing. Be there as the Jaguars make the 17th overall pick and don't miss the unveiling of the official 30th season logo that you voted on. We're getting the party started at 7 p.m. Tickets are free, so register today at jaguars.com slash draft party. We can't wait to see you there. The Jacksonville Jaguars select... Get in zone, AutoZone. Welcome to AutoZone. What are you working on today? I think my battery's dead. With free battery testing and charging, we can help you get back on the road. Get in zone, AutoZone. So what if I need a new one? We have the right Duralast battery for you, only at AutoZone. Get in zone, AutoZone. And what about my old battery? We can recycle it right here at America's number one battery destination. Get in zone, AutoZone. Restrictions apply. The flagship station of the Jacksonville Jaguars. WJXL AM Jacksonville Beach. WJXL FM Jacksonville Beach. Hello, First Coast. I'm sure by now you have seen our bright green GFL trucks and containers throughout the greater Jacksonville area. We're an industry leader in solid waste and would love the opportunity to earn your business. We're committed to customer service, reliability, and have an unwavering focus on safety. Whether commercial or construction, let us haul your waste away. Call 904-760-5880 to get a quote today from GFL, Green for Life. I'm here with Danny Van Sickle, Director of the Electrical Training Alliance. Danny, tell me about your program. Hey, Rick. We're a five-year electrical apprenticeship. Our students start out making over $40,000 a year and right now graduate making over $90,000 a year, including benefits. There is no tuition or no student debt. You just have to apply and get accepted. Did you say no tuition and no student debt? You heard that right, Rick. Once you're accepted to the program, your only cost are the books and the course fees, about $800 a year. That sounds like an amazing opportunity. How can I learn more? Just go to etajax.org and you can apply there. Apply by May 23rd. Hi, this is Dave Barker. Multi-unit hair grafting is now available at IHRS and can give you three times more hair in one procedure over a traditional hair transplant. Multi-unit hair grafting gave me more hair in one procedure and within my budget. You can grow your hair back with this exclusive new procedure. Call for a free evaluation. Call IHRS 904-777-IHRS 777-IHRS 777-4477 1010XL is presented by Farrah & Farrah, exclusive injury law firm of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Protecting you and your family. Call 396-5555. Jacksonville Let's ring up another guest on the All-Pro Roofing phone line. Back here on 1010XL at 92.5 FM in the city of Jacksonville. We are glad you are with us. Boy, what a day in the National Football League. What a day in the AFC South. The Houston Texans 
have acquired Stephon Diggs from the Buffalo Bills in exchange for some draft capital, including a 2025 second-round pick. That gives Houston a free agent and trade haul of Stephon Diggs, Daniil Hunter, Joe Mixon, D'Amico Autry, just to name a few. Boy, they are loading up out in Houston. Our guy is Cecil Shorts, former Jaguar wide receiver. He's also a former Texan wide receiver. You get him every week during the year, and you get him periodically here in the offseason. But Cecil, today is one of those days we had to dial your phone, man. What's the reaction in Houston about (laughs) Stephon Diggs being on his way to town? You know what? I, I seen some smoke coming up. I'm looking over my school building now. I see smoke in one area. I see a fire in another. They are excited. There's it's, it's all types of stuff going on right now. Um, but it seems like the Texans are taking full advantage of CJ and his rookie contract. Um, they understand that window because uh, when he gets paid, if he continues to play like he plays, going you know he's going to get a huge contract. But right now, with all the cap room they have, um, this kind of just tops off. What they've been doing all free agency long is just bringing in good veteran players and Stefan Diggs to add with Tank Dale, to add with Dalton Schultz, to add with Joe Mixon, to add with Nico Collins, who had 1,200 yards last year. It's a scary, scary looking offense right now for the rest of the AFC South. There is a Jaguar correlation to this, which we'll get to in a moment, but a wide receiver like Stefan Diggs, a veteran, he's going to be 31, right, in November. Mm-hmm. It's important to take that mm-hmm. into account. But what can a guy like that do for C.J. Stroud's development? Man, listen, um, when you have a guy the last six seasons had over 1,000 yards, the last five seasons um, had over um, 100 catches in, in, in five of those six seasons, I mean, he's just a guy that can always get open, can make the tough catch, can run any single routes. And you add that to already a good young core of receivers. You had Tank Dale, who had 745 yards last year and missed the last four or five games. You got Nico Collins who had a breakout year last year um, with 1,200 yards. You had uh, you got Darden, Darden, uh Schultz, excuse me, who had a great year. Somebody CJ trusted as a tight end that really came along. So when you add that piece, you're set on offense. On paper, you are set, completely set on offense. Going into before today, the talk of the time was okay. What are they going to do in the draft? They still got to pick up a, a number three option at receiver. They still got to pick up a corner. And the defense, you are on offense. You are set, brother. You are good to go. You have a superstar, and even in the, even in this Thursday, a superstar in Stefan Diggs, a superstar. Now, what worries me a tad bit is the reason uh, he got let go. <laughs> the reason they gave up, they were, they were willing to pay thirty one million dollars in, in dead cap money. They they wouldn't take that on to let him go. Um, but in this situation, you got to trust D'Amico. You got to trust Nick 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 uh, Casario. You got to trust the culture that they're building and the leaders that are in place that they can they can contain, they can main, they can maintain, and they can they can hold Stefan accountable and keep him happy. Former Jaguar and Texan wide receiver Cecil Shorts here with us on 1010XL in Jacksonville. Cecil in Jacksonville, they won the division championship in 2022, and they decided to run it back. Right, they really didn't do anything last off season. And you see the result, 9-8 and eight in 2022, 9-8 and eight in 2023. Houston wins the division championship out of nowhere, very similar to Jacksonville. And all they've done are bring in Pro Bowl slash all pro players from Daniil Hunter to Stephon Diggs to Joe Mixon to Danico Autry. People here in Jacksonville see that. They're mad about a couple of things. We'll get to the other one in a moment. But, man, the Texans did not rest on their laurels this offseason. No, they're, they're hungry. They, they want to win now. I think what everybody is saying right now is, okay, Nick and D'Amico, Hal and Canna, uh, Hannah, excuse me, what they want to do is they want to win the Super Bowl now. So they're like, hey, we got our quarterback. Let's surround – we got our coach. Let's surround these guys with as many big-time players as we can. Um, and they have the cast space to do it. And, and they're just doing it in a, in, a, in a relative really, really good way. I love how Nick is um, – the people are like, oh, he traded out the first round. Well, basically, he got a first-round pick for the Steph- Stephon Diggs. He traded out 23 for Stephon Diggs, and he gave up a two that wasn't even his to Minnesota. So they're just sitting in really good shape right now. Their core of the team is young. And they went out there and add key pieces, and they're going to continue to add pieces in the draft. They're going to continue to make moves. Nick Casario is known for moving up and down in the draft. So it's not going to be the last time you see 
uh, the Texans make a big move, in my opinion, this offseason. They still have a chance to go out there and bring a safety in. They still got a chance to go out there and bring another experienced corner in. This is a place that you want to be if you're a free agent. This is a place that you want to be if you're a rookie coming into the draft because of the Miko Ryans and the culture that's being set. He's a former player. He has this city on fire. He understands what it means. He can relate to the players. And not only did you do you have him, you hit on CJ. You hit on Will Anderson Jr. It's just a hot spot right now. So they're doing a great job of not staying uh, content. As you can say, in the past years, you can see teams like Jacksonville or even Houston in the past kind of stay content and make smaller moves. They're like, hey, we're going we're gonna to do it big. We're going to change everything. This is the perfect time. They're getting the brand new uniforms. They're getting like this, all this hype around Houston, and they got to live up to it, but it's just perfect timing for what's happening here. Former Jaguar and former Texan wide receiver Cecil Shorts with us here on 1010XL in Jacksonville. You know, Tennessee wants to see what they have with Will Levis. So they go get DeAndre Hopkins. They go get Calvin Ridley. Houston knows what they have in C.J. Stroud. They go get Dalton Schultz and Joe Mixon and now Stephon Diggs. Here in Jacksonville, you let Ridley go. You bring in Gabe Davis. I guess you did go out and get Christian Kirk and Zay Jones a couple of years ago and Evan Ingram. So it's not as if, Cecil, they haven't done anything to surround Trevor with talent. But when one team is bringing in Calvin Ridley and D-Hop, the other team is bringing in Stephon Diggs, people here are very upset about the events of today. What's your uh, thoughts on that? I, I feel them, but you you gotta you still gotta play the game. The games aren't won on paper. You know what I mean? Like just because you bring in those huge names doesn't mean they're gonna produce. Doesn't mean they're gonna stay healthy. Um, I do think you got quality pieces when when you brought in Gabe Davis. You still got Christian Kirk. You still got Evan Ingram. You still have Travis Etienne. Like you still have pieces in place. You still got the draft coming up, right? Anything can happen with that place. So you're not in a bad situation. I just think when it comes to having the big name splash to have the huge name, like, oh, my gosh, let's get Stefan, let's, let's get this person. Look, it might not be the right fit. You know, taking Stefan Diggs is a, is a – I'll be honest with you, taking Stefan Diggs is a risk. <laughs> it's a huge risk. I'm going to say it again. They gave – they said we'll take $31 million dead cap hit. We will take that to get him out of our locker room. If you look at the Bills receiving core, they have Curtis Samuel as their number one receiver right now. They are willing to take that hit because of the type of cancer he was in that locker room, what he was bringing, how he was bringing them down, per se, right? So just because it looks good on paper doesn't mean it's going to work out. Trust your process. Trust what's going on there. Um, Balky's done some good things this offseason, and then let's continue to build with Trevor. Now, I'm not saying don't keep surrounding him with weapons, but don't get caught up in the big fancy names all the time. It's still got to work out on the field. See, so there's a lot of talk around here. Zay Jones, Christian Kirk, Gabe Davis. Is that good enough to go to the season with, or do you have to draft a wide receiver potentially in round one or by the latest round two in a couple of weeks? What's your thought on that? I, I personally think you need to draft one. I, I, I do. I do. I do. I think this is a deep receiver draft. I think it's going to be a run of receivers somewhere in the first round, whether it's the mid uh, to late end of the first round. It's going to be a run. I think you need to hop up and get in that run. I, I just think, I think what you have are – a solid group, but it's not an exceptional group, right? And I think what you can get in this draft or what you can go out and trade for, whatever the case may be, um, you need a, you need another weapon. You know what I mean? You need another weapon. Gabe Davis is good uh, potentially as he can be. Um, he hasn't had a ton of targets. He's never had a 1,000-yard receiving season. Um, he's had some big-time plays and some big-time moments. But I don't know if he's your number one guy, right? Christian Kirk, he can be a good receiver. But is he really a number one type receiver? You still, in my opinion, have a number one guy. Um, and I think Calvin was number one. But just, you know, the money he got, he couldn't pass that up in Tennessee. And I don't think as a Jacksonville Jaguar, you wanted to pay him that much money to stay, right? Um, so I do think we need to add some depth, add some a, a piece or two. It was the first round or the second round. You can find good. It's a history of good, good receivers going in the second round. Um, that can co-op there and make an impact early. But I do think you need to add another piece to the puzzle. That group, Zay, Christian, Gabe, solid group. But is it, if I had to rank it, I wouldn't, I would say it's three or it's, it's just towards the bottom compared to what you got with the Texans, what you got with Tennessee, um, even what you got in Indy. You know what I mean? So it's it's, it's definitely something you got to improve on and, and work with. But it's not terrible. It's not terrible. Guys can make plays for sure, but are they – Compared to the rest of the AFC South, I'm not sure they're in the top tier. 
Final moments here with former Jaguar wide receiver Cecil Short. Cecil, you're in the state of Texas, and I'm curious. The two wide receivers being linked to Jacksonville the most, one is an LSU Tiger, the other is a Texan, Texas Longhorn. Uh, Brian Thomas from LSU and A.D. Mitchell from Texas. Have you seen either guy? Do you know of either guy? And what's your thought on either guy? Love Thomas. Um, big guy, can run into your house. LSU produces receiver after year after year after year after year. I think uh, whether it's Napers or it's, or it's Thomas, they're a hit. They're going to be special in the league. And then I, I saw I saw uh, Mitchell up close and personal at UT. He's a guy that can run any any route in the route tree. Um, he can guy can run by you. He can get off the press well. He runs routes well. I love his aggressiveness towards the ball. If you get either or of those guys, they can come in and make an immediate impact, in my opinion. Um, so you, you're in good shape if you draft either one of those guys. If it were you, if you were Trent Balky, both guys are on the board. You're taking one of them. Who do you take? I'm going Thompson, uh, or, or, or Thomas. Excuse me. I, I love his size. I love his speed. Um, those guys. This the this the teaching that's being taught at LSU and how they're running routes and the similarities you see year after year after year, and then how they translate what they learn from LSU into the NFL. I will go the LSU route. That's that's just my humble opinion. So when I look at um, kind of the transition of LSU receivers to the league, I gotta take that in consideration, right? I gotta take his size, his speed, what can he bring to the table. Um, so I, I think I would choose him over Mitchell. Cecil, final question. I appreciate your insight. Again, seven years in the National Football League at wide receiver. You know a thing or two about what you're talking about there. Final question. You got AFC South all over you. Former Jaguar former Texan, DeAndre Hopkins. You were a former teammate of his, obviously, in Nashville now. Boy, this division was a joke in August of 2023. People were calling it the worst division in football, the most boring division in football. Here we are eight months later, April of 24. Cecil, I don't know if there's a more compelling division with what Tennessee's done this offseason. Anthony Richardson coming back. Houston and obviously Jacksonville. I mean, What's your thought on the way the division stacks up right now? This is this is one of the most interesting divisions in the NFL. If the quarterback play is up to play, is up to par, like if, if Anthony Richardson lives up to his draft, um, his draft position, if Will Levis continues to show some upside, you're in a situation where you have some darn good quarterbacks in this division. That makes things very tough for everybody, for opposing defenses when they have to play each other twice a year, right? Um, so this has a chance to be one of the best divisions in football. Not there yet, but we got the guys got to pan out, um, especially Richardson and, and Will Levis. But when you look at it as a whole, it's like, hey, you got some pieces here on each team that, hey, they can make some noise. Jacksonville coming to year, it was whispers about Super Bowl. This year, you got Houston whispering about Super Bowl, and it's come off a good year. You got Tennessee making some big splashes on the defensive side and offensive side. And then you got Anthony Richardson coming back, Michael Pittman coming back, the defense coming back. So it's going to be interesting to see what Indianapolis does as well. So it's definitely going to be competitive. It seems like it's a very young division as well. Um, so it's going to be good. It's going to be good. I don't know. I wouldn't say it's as good as the AFC North is yet, but I think it's on its way to be one of the premier divisions in the NFL. Former Jaguar wide receiver <clears throat> Cecil Shorts. You get him every week during the year here on 1010XL, and you'll get him periodically here in the off season. Cecil, enjoy it, my friend. Keep enjoying the off season. We'll get you on right about draft time in a couple of weeks, and we'll see where the dust settles when it comes to the Jacksonville Jaguars. Thank you as always, bud. Hey, no problem, RG. Appreciate you, man. May I have your attention, please? Get ready for 1010XL's new primetime lineup. Start the day with Dan Hicken and Jeff Prosser. Dempsey and Fat Tony take you to noon. It's the ladies of helmets and heels until 2. XL primetime follows at 4. Franchi and Carline drive you home. Then Baloo and Hacker take you into the night. It's showtime! Winter time at the Blue Crab Crab House. You know what that means. Time for oysters. Buy them by the tray, broiled, half shell with Romano cheese, wine topping, or fried. And of course, each and every Wednesday, $1 oysters at the Blue Crab Crab House. Serving Northeast Florida since 1996. Make reservations by calling 260 Crab. Jacksonville's best, the Blue Crab Crab House, off of San Jose on Jewington Creek Road. 
Hey there, Jacksonville. With scorching temperatures just around the corner, it's crucial to ensure your AC is blowing nice and cool. Duck Duck Air Conditioning is here to keep you comfortable all summer long. But don't wait until the heat gets here. Our service techs are ready right now to handle any cooling issues you may have at your home or business. Call Duck Duck AC today at 904-862-6769 to schedule. That's 904-862-6769. Duck Duck Air Conditioning, online at duckduckac.com. Imagine waking up this time next week and being 100% debt-free. No credit cards, no car loan, no personal loan. Hey, it's Prosser here, and Loan Pronto's Equity Express line of credit can make that happen. Homeowners are turning their home equity into cash almost instantly. With Loan Pronto's AI-based system, you can get approval in about 10 minutes with almost no documentation, no appraisal, and no hassle. You can get hundreds of thousands of dollars out of your home. Use that money to pay off all your other loans. The average homeowner saves over $850 a month doing this. Listen, your home value is way up. You can use that to wipe out all those credit cards, get some money for a home improvement. Literally hundreds of thousands are at your fingertips, and approval is just minutes away. So call now, 904-999-1508, 904-999-1508. That's LoanPronto.com at 904-999-1508. NMLS 1661781, subject to lender approval, equal housing lender. Hello here for Smunez Vision. Why Smunez Vision? Well, I've been with Dr. Neil Smunez now since I got back to Jacksonville in 2006. 37 years of experience he has. Smunez Vision is a family organization that focuses on personal high quality medical and surgical eye care. Dr. Catherine Smunez is fellowship trained in cornea and cataract surgery and all refractive surgery. Combined, that's 30 years plus in laser eye surgery. Visit smunezvision.com today. Care you can see. This right here will be the biggest moment of his career. A tradition unlike any other. The Masters, he'll get the green jacket. Game in corner, Magnolia Lane, Augusta National. Yes. Coverage of the Masters on 1010XL is presented by Vaughn Motor Group. Hey everybody, it's Mike Dempsey here for Pella Windows and Doors. Look, obviously the warmer temperatures are already here. And if you're like me, you want that oppressive Florida heat to stay outside your house. That's why I'm such a fan of Pella Windows and Doors. By now, we know that windows are the number one way that heat gets in and the cold gets out. So when you're ready for the stylish design and energy efficiency that comes from Pella Windows and Doors, visit their showroom on Phillips Highway, just north of Bay Meadows, or you can always find them online at PellaJacks.com. That's Pella Windows and Doors. Hacker here with another unbelievable stat. I'm now down 45 pounds in just six weeks with a Waken 180 weight loss. 45 pounds, and I basically just started the program. I wasn't always this walking advertisement for feeling good. Let's just say the struggle was real. Tried everything, programs, diets, and yes, even those injections. Sure, I lost a few pounds, but the results were so slow. Top that with not feeling myself, coupled with needing shots for the rest of my life? No, thank you. It's not just the 45-pound number. Even though, yeah, that's unbelievable. It's about life, man. I took Little Hack to SeaWorld last week. Walked around all day, no sweat, no being tired. Two months ago, I would have skipped out on that whole experience. If it's time for you to drop some weight like it was for me, do what I did. Go to awaken180weightloss.com or call 844-346-1800. That's 844-346-1800. It's Awaken 180 Weight Loss. Hicken here, the Borland Groover Foundation proudly presents the annual March to Get Screen 5K race and one mile fun run. Sunday, April 14th, the race starts at 7 a.m. under the Fuller Warren Bridge. Their mission, raise awareness about colorectal cancer and related deaths. All proceeds benefit the Borland Groover Foundation. It's a nonprofit organization devoted to building a healthy and equitable community that is free from colon cancer. Visit BorlandGrooverFoundation.com for more. Here's your 1010XL community calendar of local events and nonprofit groups helping people here at home. If you'd like to learn more about the Police Athletic League's Julian Jackson Amateur Boxing Tournament Saturday, April 13th, Go to jackspalsports.org. If you'd like to play in the Northeast Florida Cornhole Tournament at Wingate Park, May 18th, register at tsunami10u at mail.com. It benefits Tsunami Fast Pitch Softball. The Tom Coughlin J Fund helps families battling childhood cancer, and there are ways you can help. Go to tcjfund.org. City Rescue Mission provides life-changing support for the homeless. Find ways to get involved at crmjacks.org. 
If your home is missing a little love, the Jacksonville Humane Society has over 100 pets of all ages and breeds looking for a loving home. Find yours at jackshumane.org. You can find out how to share your community event at 1010XL.com. 1010XL is presented by Farrah & Farrah, exclusive injury law firm of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Protecting you and your family. Call 396-5555. Jacksonville. Hacker After Dark on 1010XL. Yeah, it's not going the orange and blues way tonight on the diamond. My gosh. Sixth inning. Where's that? Dick Hauser Stadium, Tallahassee. Sitting with the animals there. I know all about that place. Florida State is up 19 to 3 on the Gators right now. 19 to 3 in the sixth inning. Good grief. The 10-run mercy rule doesn't take effect till the 7th. So this game's got about an inning left. But, man alive, Florida gets swept by Missouri. They now are getting absolutely boat raced by Florida State. They got to find some answers, man. Not a good year to this point. Certainly an underachieving year for the Gators based on what people thought. 19-3. to Florida State's about to beat them for the third time. This season, yikes. Uh, Speaking of college athletics, on Saturday, we cover mainly four sports teams collegiately in our area. Of course, Florida State, Florida, Miami, and Georgia. Florida State is the only one that doesn't have their spring game on Saturday. The Knowles are April 20th, but the Hurricanes, the Dogs, and the Gators all have spring games coming up on Saturday. So the next three nights, we'll take a look at each of these three. Tonight, we'll give a couple of moments to Miami. Year three for Mario Cristobal and the Hurricanes. Unlike Billy Napier coming into year three, Miami has shown gradual improvement, right? Miami won five games year one. People weren't happy. Last year, Miami did win seven games. And keep in mind, They won seven games, even with the absolute nonsense of that Georgia Tech game. Remember, all they had to do was take a knee, and they would have gotten eight wins. But for whatever reason, Mario Cristobal decided to do one of the dumbest things in the history of coaching at any level of football. So they ended with seven. But they still went from five wins in year one to seven wins in year two. But they had quarterback issues, right? They had quarterback questions. So what do they do? They go into the transfer portal and they get arguably, arguably the best quarterback out of the transfer portal. And that's Cam Ward from Washington State. Now look, did I watch a lot of Washington State Cougar football? No, not a lot. I think I saw about half of the Apple Cup between them and Washington. But I do see highlights. I do read up on things. And Cam Ward was a guy that was flirting with the NFL until he miraculously had a change of heart, and I wonder how that happened, and ended up going to Miami. One would think NIL played a big part of that. But nevertheless, Miami has their quarterback now, and they think they're going to be pretty good this year. And boy, that is just a gigantic game. You know, we've talked so much about Miami and Florida from the Gators side of things on August the 31st the season opener. What about from the hurricane side of things? What about Mario Cristobal? Does he need that game as bad, if not maybe a little worse than Billy Napier? I don't know if it's worse, but he needs that game probably just as much. You look at the hurricane schedule, and albeit it's not, I wouldn't call it a daunting schedule. They open up with Florida, then they're home to FAMU and Ball State. Give me a break. Those are two wins. They go to USF. They should win that to get the three wins minimum, depending on what happens against the Gators. Then they're home to Virginia Tech at Cal in an ACC tilt. Boy, nothing says Atlantic Coast Conference football like Miami at Cal. Then at Louisville, home Florida State, home Duke, at Georgia Tech, home Wake Forest at Syracuse. That is not hard at all 
Florida could be difficult. Florida State could be difficult. Va Tech, I guess, could be difficult. Maybe at Louisville. But that is a very manageable schedule for the Hurricanes. I think they have every expectation or should have every expectation to surpass that seven-win total they had last year. And if you go from five wins to seven wins to eight or nine wins, it's hard to complain about Mario Cristobal at that point. Hurricane spring game on Saturday down in Coral Gables. Let's talk Hurricanes. Let's talk Georgia. Let's talk Florida. All three spring games with my buddy Brent Beard. You see Brent locally on First Coast News. You get him weekly here on Hacker After Dark. It's a Tuesday evening in Jacksonville, Florida, and we're glad you're with us talking a little college ball with Brent Beard next, 1010XL and 92.5 FM. Dan Higgin and Jeff Prosser. We feel like children. They are the drill. We're closer than brothers. Brothers always fight. Mornings. We really have a relationship that's way, way past that. On 1010XL. We've grown up. Here's Linda Beaver. Beaver Toyota and Beaver Chevrolet have just received a special allocation of new vehicles directly from the factory. Not 10, not 20, but hundreds of new vehicles with special savings that haven't been seen in years. Every new vehicle available in your favorite color and option as far as the eye can see. Plus, get our exclusive 20-year, 200,000-mile warranty with every new car purchase. Hurry to Beaver Toyota in St. Augustine or Beaver Chevrolet in Jacksonville before the best deals are gone. Get in the zone, AutoZone. Welcome to AutoZone. What are you working on today? I think my battery's dead. With free battery testing and charging, we can help you get back on the road. So what if I need a new one? We have the right Duralast battery for you, only at AutoZone. And what about my old battery? We can recycle it right here at America's number one battery destination. Restrictions apply. Mueller Air Conditioning presents Are You Cool? Today's challenger, a corporate management manager from Jacksonville, Florida. Meet Les Blankston. Yeah, hi, Bob. That is a remarkably beige suit there, Les. Tell us, why are you on the show? (laughs) Well, I just replaced my old air conditioner with a new one from Bueller, and I'm just so comfortable these days. I wondered, am I cool now? Let's find out, Les. Go ahead and spin the wheel. <laughs> That's right, Les. By upgrading your old AC to a more energy-efficient model from Bueller Air Conditioning, you'll save money, save energy, and proudly show your family that you are cool. <laughs> Do you think I should get a mohawk? Uh, pace yourself, Les. Stay cooler with Bueller. Visit BuellerAir.com. Want to play golf and help raise some money for scholarships at the same time? Join the Clay County Gator Club at their 24th annual scholarship golf tournament presented by Walker Footings, Sunday, April 21st. To register, go to claygators.com. It's about the hunt. Captain Kevin Favor here with Captain Kirk and Jeff Lagerman. We take you from the water to the woods. On the Nimnit Outdoor Show, presented by Duck Duck Rooter Plumbing and Septic Services. Let's go to the woods, y'all. Saturday mornings from 7 to 10 on 1010XL. Are your kids ready to play this summer? Come check out the Y. Summer is a time for kids to explore new things and expand the limits of their imagination. At the Wise Summer Camp, every day is a new adventure. Kids can learn about STEM, arts and humanities, athletic sports, outdoor games, and more. Registration is now open, but space is limited, and spots are filling up quickly. Learn more and find your adventure at fcymca.org. Search Summer Day Camp. This is Ace Carline for QC Kinetics. The future of medicine is here at QC Kinetics, the nation's leader in regenerative medicine. If you're tired of achy joints, if your joint pain is keeping you from doing what you love, you need to call QC Kinetics now. They've got two great locations. Call for a free consultation at 904-274-5522. That's 904-274-5522. And go see them, Mandarin and Ponte Vedra. You can get in. They've got availability. You need to give them a call. Stop dealing with pain in your hips and your shoulders and your knees. 
Steroids, surgery, drugs, these are no longer your best options. Regenerative medicine at QC Kinetics is transforming lives with innovative treatments that deliver lasting results. Give QC Kinetics a call today. Again, 904-274-5522. Go see them in Mandarin and Ponte Vedra. That's QC Kinetics. Breaking news, Jacksonville. Play it again, sports is back. We are proud to be opening a brand new store on Merrill Road, but we need your help. We are currently stocking up and we need your gently used sports and fitness equipment. Play it again, sports offers cash on the spot for all your used gear. We buy baseball, softball, football, hockey, lacrosse, golf, water sports. You name it, we buy it. Turn that gear into cash at Play It Again Sports Jacksonville on Merrill Road near 295 in the Merrill Station Shopping Plaza. Crosser here. When it comes to the business of selling your home, there's one promise I can give you that will deliver, and that promise is chadandsandy.com. That's chad, A-N-D, sandy.com. How do I know this promise is guaranteed? Because they say so, and then they deliver. You see, Chad and Sandy guarantee your home sold at an agreed-upon price and deadline, or they will buy it. So whatever problems you think you're having selling your home, there is your simple solution. They're going to buy it if it's not sold for exactly what you want. Mortgage rates have lowered going into the spring selling season. Now is the time to maximize your equity, and you can do it with the real estate team of Chad and Sandy. They have a plan and the experience to sell your home fast for maximum cash this spring. John and Ursula in Green Meadows wrote in, I, we weren't in great health, decided to downsize to an easier place to manage. After 185 days, our home failed to sell. We went to Chad and Sandy, sold in 12 days. You can too at chadandsandy.com. Without the ones like you who work tirelessly to keep things running, everything would suddenly stop. Hospitals, factories, schools, and power plants, they all depend on you. No matter the weather, emergency, or time of day, you're the ones who get it done. At Granger, we're here for you with professional grade industrial supplies. Count on real time product availability and fast delivery. Call clickgranger.com or just stop by. Granger for the ones who get it done. 1010XL is presented by Farrah and Farrah, exclusive injury law firm of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Protecting you and your family. Call 396 5555. Jacksonville. Let's ring up another guest on the All Pro Roofing phone line. Back here on 1010XL and 92.5 FM in the city of Jacksonville. We are glad you are with us on this Tuesday evening as spring football begins to wind down across colleges here in the southeastern part of the country. In fact, we have three spring games coming up on Saturday. G-Day game in Athens. The Miami Hurricanes will have their spring game and the Orange and Blue game down in Gainesville. We'll certainly talk about all three and... Boy, what a seismic shift in college basketball on the coaching front as John Calipari leaving Kentucky to head to Arkansas. Wow, a lot of th to get into with that. Let me welcome in my friend Brenton Beard. You see him locally on First Coast News, and you get him weekly right here on Hacker After Dark. Mr. Beard, how are you, my friend? Well, uh, sad to see the college basketball season end, but the tournament is just about perfect in the length uh, that is a well-condensed three weeks that really gets our attention. Um, and I think with teams like Florida getting better, that's going to make it even more exciting. But congratulations to UConn and going back to back. That ties the four, aforementioned Florida uh, a few decades ago. Um, and then, um, as you mentioned, uh, a lot of – shifting and changing now in the off season for college basketball and look college football is our first love but it is nice and in fact to, to have the attention on college basketball and the sec that that's made quite a uh impact uh on getting up close to either being the best conference or certainly maybe the second best yeah no question it wasn't uh, the best tournament for the sec but they had a ridiculously good regular season alabama ultimately landing in the final four and that brings me to john calipari brent i mean seismic right he leaves kentucky yeah. reportedly headed to arkansas it's all but a done deal at this point i mean your reaction to one of the biggest pieces of college basketball coaching news the sec has had in quite some time 
Yeah, and that probably needed to happen. I mean, he was um, really kind of had played out the string at, at Kentucky. I think the thing that is concerning, uh, they have not been to the Final Four since 2015, which was basically 10 years. How in the world <laughs> heck does that happen, that Kentucky does not go? So it's pretty obvious the program had uh, gotten stale and, and things were not working. Uh, a little bit surprised maybe that he went to Arkansas. And they've got their own uh, tradition Musselman goes to uh, uh, Southern Cal, uh, and uh, uh, Cal goes to Arkansas. Understand that that um, he is an in with the Tyson Chicken family and the Walmart family, that the, the biggest families as far as money in uh, Arkansas. Um, and he will also have access to about five million dollars in an NIL fund. So. I guess the question is, will he kind of restart his career uh, hack at that point? Uh, I think we'll know soon because uh, Arkansas is uh, uh, certainly, I I guess, taking a risk with him uh, to some degree. But but you're right, it is. It is really shaking up the SEC in college basketball. You see Brent Beard on First Coast News. You get him weekly right here on Hacker After Dark. Yeah, I'm not sure if the casual college fan realizes how much money is out in Arkansas. You mentioned Tyson Chicken. You mentioned Walmart. They are huge donors to the University of Arkansas. They got a lot of money out there with Wu Pig Suey. So uh, John Calipari will be well compensated. And like you said, a lot of NIL funds. Quickly to Kentucky, because I want to get to spring ball. But Billy Donovan, that name has been brought up, Brent. I mean, people don't realize he's 58. I don't know why Billy Donovan would want to get back in the college no. game. He's got a cushy job in Chicago. Um, although, I mean, there is some talk that they're not you know, thrilled at, at the Bulls and, and their ninth place in the Eastern Conference yeah, right now, but I don't really. think Billy's on the hot seat. I've heard the name Brad Stevens, the former Butler coach, kind of the same thing, though. He's got a cushy front office job with the Boston mm-hmm. Celtics. To me, why would you ever leave a job in the NBA where you're making millions to go back to college where you have to recruit every week, where you have to deal with boosters? I just, for the life of me, cannot see Donovan or Stevens taking that job. No, I don't either, uh, frankly. Um, it, it, um, and look, Donovan may be even close, uh, uh, fairly soon to retiring. Um, uh, but I mean, he's done well. It, look, it would be great to have him back in college basketball, but similar to college football, probably a lot of these coaches are waiting until some of this NIL and the portal stuff, um, calms down or at least gets more of a handle on it. I mean, I've seen all kinds of names for Kentucky, uh, Mark Pope of BYU, Sean Miller of, of Xavier, uh, Rick Pitino, which is not going to happen, of St. John. That would be hilarious. Uh, it, it, it really would be. Lamont Paris of South Carolina, Fred Holberg of uh, Nebraska. Um, now, obviously, Hurley of UConn has been mentioned. Uh, and, and look, if you've won two straight national championships, your your light won't be burning any brighter than it is now for him, <laughs> will it, Ryan? So, uh, I mean, if he is, if, if they give him a call, he's certainly going to listen and will be a tremendous opportunity. I'm going to throw this in here, too. If Hurley doesn't take it, I would not be surprised to see Bruce Pearl's name being brought up with this too is a possibility so but again as you know it it, it is still the job in the sec even though a lot of these schools in terms of winning uh, have passed kentucky but no one has those facilities money uh in the tradition they have yeah mark pope is the one that sticks out to me if kentucky wants to go the route of north carolina and duke and kind of keep it in the family Mark Pope played at Kentucky, so that's certainly a name to keep in mind. But I agree. I think, you know, Bruce Pearl would be a great fit there. 
um, with Kentucky. So we'll see. We know Nate Oates of Alabama took his name basically out of the running last night. So did Jay Wright. So we'll see what the Wildcats do up there in the Commonwealth to replace John Calipari. All right, Brent, the spring football and the time we have left, the orange and blue game on Saturday. I guess uh, the star attraction will be DJ Lagway. For people heading down there, they're going to want to see the five-star freshman in action, and they will get to see him, but make no mistake about it, when they go to Gainesville, this is Graham Mertz's football team in 2024. Yes. Yeah, 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 and people can't forget that. Uh, DJ Langway just not ready. Uh, now, that he'll get better, and they'll have a package for him, and people will be yelling for him at times. But Graham Mertz is, frankly, one of the better quarterbacks in the league, so that's going to take care of itself. I think the thing uh, that has got my attention, uh, a lot of work on tackling <laughs> dual <laughs> after last year and all the missed tackles. And um, Billy Napiers has said that they, they are tackling much better, which is good to see. Eugene Wilson is, a, is just a tremendous wide receiver, uh, and he has is, he is really done – a good job. Safety DJ Douglas is a guy they mentioned who's got a, some interceptions. Cam Jackson um, has uh, gone from 374 to 335. Um, and, and as far as the game, it, it's going to have the game back on Saturday. Hopefully there will be a big crowd. Look, uh, <clears throat> you and I both know they need to come out of this game um, doing the little things right. Uh, they don't need to have two number threes on the field at the same time. The, the special teams needs to go a lot smoother. And the thing they don't need is 10-7 to seven, uh, or something akin to that. They need to show they can move the ball. And I know it's a spring game, but you and I both know, Hank, what happens in the spring game that lasts in people's mind for several weeks. A couple of more for Brent Beard. You see him locally on First Coast News. You also get him weekly right here on Hacker After Dark. I completely agree, and I think one of the standpoints, Brent, that I think I'm interested in watching, they got to replace their two best playmakers from last year and Trevor right. Etienne and Ricky Pearsall. So yes. which of the young wide receivers will emerge on Saturday? How does uh, Trayon Webb and some of the younger running backs look? That's certainly something that I'm going to keep my eye on. Well, all that's going to be important. Um, and, the, and I mean, it just – I want to use the word that smooth transition. There just needs to be between uh, units going on and off the field, uh, a smooth transition between uh, the quarterbacks. Uh, you you want to say and see – I mean, they've got some good backs uh, that uh, I think will do a good job. You want to see these guys – uh, healthy, so uh, sp spring is going to be in a, I think, an important time for the Gators, and this game will tell us something. Yeah, I used to love the spring game when I was little. In fact, we're going to mm -hmm. take a little, we're thinking about Saturday, but if not, we're going to take him next year, uh, a little hack to the spring game down in Gainesville, just because I remember when I was five, six, seven years old, the orange and blue game was it, man. That was great. You got it's to see absolutely. people you hadn't seen in a few months, and uh, hopefully a lot of people will be down there on Saturday for the game. Same thing in Coral Gables, Mario Cristobal, year three, their spring coming to an end. Obviously, it's all about Cam Ward all the time with the Hurricanes. How have the Hurricanes looked this spring, Brent? I think they've been improved, and that's good to – be able to hear and they've got a freshman tight end Elijah Lofton that has created uh, a lot of excitement for them um, they they're still looking for other wide receivers Isaiah Horton is a guy that you hear Ray Ray uh, Joseph uh, Jojo Trader uh, Nye Carr uh, the defense uh, has seemed to have had a good spring. Uh, they've got a lot of guys uh, who are going to be out, uh, but that that is uh, it, you hear more positive things about them. Uh, we won't go into this right now, but I did get something uh, over the last few days. Attendance for Miami uh, this last season forty nine thousand average. 
which was a drop of, of 9.5%. Uh, and they've had a, a consistent drop in attendance uh, over the last five years to about 8%. That, and we'll get into this more after the spring games. Uh, but there's some issues Miami's got to deal with, right, Hank? And, and uh, some of these you, you deal with with the facility. That's not going to be uh, easy to be able to do. They're landlocked in a lot of ways. But like Florida, and these two teams are very similar they need a good spring, and boy, do they need a good fall, too. Yeah, they do. And again, we'll talk about it, and we'll repeat it until kickoff on August the 31st. Just a gigantic season opener for the Hurricanes yeah. and the Gators there in Gainesville for both the programs and the third-year head coaches, Mario Cristobal and Billy Napier. Finally, to Georgia, we'll do Florida State next week. Their spring game is a week from Saturday. But Georgia also joins Miami and Florida playing their spring game, uh, Georgia looking to rebound, I guess. The, you know, most people would consider 13-1 and one to be an unbelievable really? season, but obviously Georgia was very disappointed to not get in the playoff. Uh, your thoughts on the dogs coming in, and again, they look very, very good with quarterback Carson Beck. No doubt. Beck's had a really good spring. Uh, he has improved. Arian Smith is a guy at wide receiver. You hear his name uh, a lot during the spring uh, also redshirt sophomore andrew paul uh that they understand on the offensive side of the ball uh has uh, been good he has been pretty smooth uh, as a runner uh the, the other guy who's really played well is dominic lovett the missouri transfer we thought he would the light would come on eventually and it has uh and that's made a difference kobe young who's a miami transfer uh, has made uh, also some plays, so they're they're, they're excited about what he's done. Christian Miller, six four three oh five, uh, he has too. But just wanted to throw some names out of guys who have uh, uh, had a good spring uh, and continue to do so. There are eight SEC games on Saturday for spring games. Uh, it's ridiculous that. The only one we get to see is the Alabama spring game on ESPN. The rest of them are ESPN or SEC Network Plus uh, on that time. There's also three, four, five ACC games that are be going on. Clemson had theirs last week. And as we mentioned, Florida State will have their spring game coming up next week. So, uh, it's going to be a good next two weeks of spring football. Brent, as we say goodbye, I thought of you while we were down at Walt Disney World over the weekend. By the way, happy belated birthday. Thank I know a uh, little hack uh, sent you a video for your birthday. Yep. Wanted to wish you a happy birthday here on the air. I was down yep. at Walt Disney World at Epcot, and I heard overheard a couple of gentlemen talking about, I got to check my phone, the spring game begins at 2 o'clock. And I remembered that Auburn's spring game was at 2 o'clock last Saturday, and we started talking. Boy, they're excited on the planes. These two guys are season ticket holders and Auburn alums. They're very pumped about what Hugh Freeze is doing. And I asked them, I said, well, Hugh Freeze's name in that state resonates a lot more than Kalen DeBoer, and they shook their head. And they said, man, DeBoer's off to a good start in recruiting. Yep. And they're worried that he's going to pick up right where Saban left off. Is that just Auburn fan worrying too much, or is Kalen DeBoer doing a good job early on? Well, it's both. Um, uh, DeBoer has, has really done a fabulous job, from what I understand, not only recruiting, but uh, they were playing a lot of players. Uh, there's a lot of talent coming back um, on this football team. I mean, Jalen Milrow is the starter, but Ty Simpson has been the best quarterback in the two scrimmages that they that they have had. They, they Kalen DeBoer has got a really good staff, and that has made a difference. The Saban staff was good, but it also got a, a, a little bit stale. So they've got new guys there, so there's some new energy. Now what will excite these two guys, if you talk to them a, little, a few hours later, was – Auburn has a freshman receiver, Cam Coleman, who has got everybody's attention. Uh, he's from Phoenix City, 
had a really good scrimmage. And look, you and I both know the last uh, two or three years, Auburn has not had very good receivers. So th- this is a guy that they can uh, get, get excited about. Peyton Thorne is still the quarterback. Hugh Free says he's improved some, uh, but but I'm uh, Hank, I'm still not sure Peyton Thorne strikes a lot of fear in the hearts of uh, SEC defensive coordinators. No, maybe more so with his legs than his arm. He'll have to improve on that, no question about it. You get Brent Beard on First Coast News, and you get him weekly right here on Hacker After Dark. Mr. Beard, enjoy the spring games. We'll be back next week to recap and to preview the Garnet and Gold game, which will be a week from this Saturday. As always, thank you, my friend. Uh, My pleasure, bud, but we will look forward to next week. Take care. And thank you to my buddy Brent Beard. You see him locally on First Coast News. You get him weekly right here on Hacker After Dark. As yes, yeah, spring football, the spring games for Georgia, Miami, and for Florida. One more quick thought on each. I mean, Georgia, look, I don't know how disappointing a 13-1 and season can be, but it kind of was last year, right? It left a lot to be desired. So Georgia, you know, has gotten back into the lab over the last couple of weeks and months to get ready for the 2024 campaign. Carson Beck will be on a lot of Heisman lists entering the year, and the Dogs look to get back on track as much as they can. Again, coming off a very impressive 13-1 and campaign. As far as Miami, uh, year three for Mario Cristobal, very similar to year three for Billy Napier in Gainesville. Now what Cristobal has going for him is he improved from year one to year two. Year one, was it five wins? Year two to seven, should have been eight. I can still can't believe that Georgia Tech game last year for the Hurricanes. So there's been an improvement that needs to continue, though. I mean, obviously, if that's a regression in year three, that would not be a good look for Mario Cristobal. And that Gator game is just enormous for both. Of course, Cam Ward, the transfer quarterback from Washington State, will be taking the snaps for the Miami Hurricanes this year. And that does bring me to Florida as the orange and blue game is going to be on Saturday. Uh, Look, it is what it is. Expectations are not very high. That's uh, talent over there combined with, again, what I think is the hardest schedule that I can ever remember in 35-plus years of watching Florida Gator football. Now, some schedules look a lot tougher in April than they turn out to be in September and October. Hopefully, for Florida's sake, that is the case. But for the here and now, it is an absolutely brutal schedule. There's talent in Gainesville. There's no question about that. But is there enough talent to manage what is probably the hardest schedule in college football and one of the hardest I can ever remember for any college football team? And it's the perfect storm. Not only do you have a ridiculously tough schedule, But you also combine that with Billy Napier probably being on the hot seat entering 2024, so we'll see what happens. But again, a nice Saturday of spring football, a lot of spring games. I think Brent said eight SEC spring games on Saturday, five ACC spring games on Saturday, and that includes Florida, Georgia, and Miami. Florida State will have the Garnet and Gold festivities a week from Saturday afternoon. Well, that'll just about do it. It has been a very busy Tuesday night edition here of Hacker After Dark. Now every Tuesday, 8 o'clock to 10 o'clock, every night of the week, Monday through Friday, 8P to 10P, right here on 1010XL and on 92.5 FM. We have a ton of people to thank tonight. Again, Brent Beard, you see him locally on First Coast News. You get him weekly right here on Hacker After Dark. We brought you Hacker After Dark replay. My buddy Cecil Shorts, you get him every Wednesday during the NFL season. You'll get him periodically during the offseason. We got the reaction from Cecil about Stephon Diggs heading to Houston. Cecil, not only a former Jaguar, but also a former Houston Texan. So enjoyed catching up with Cecil, not only to talk about Stephon Diggs and the Texans offseason, but what the Titans have done, certainly what the Jaguars have done as well all three of those teams jacksonville tennessee and houston very active off seasons indianapolis had an active off season but they didn't bring necessarily people in they kept their own they retained a lot of their own guys which was good on the colts with guys like kenny moore grover stewart and of course 
Mike Pittman Jr. and Anthony Richardson back there at quarterback this year. And back in hour number one, Ryan Roberts. Rise in draft, the letter N, riseindraft.com. He's one of our draft guys here on Hacker After Dark, and we always appreciate Ryan taking time out for us in what is a very, very busy time of year for him as we are 16 days away, two weeks from Thursday night, away from the 2024 NFL Draft. We will be back tomorrow night on a Wednesday, and we will do it all over again beginning at 8 o'clock. Dylan Denmark was your producer tonight. Dylan, great job as always. I'm the hacker, Ryan Green. And again, Jacksonville, thank you for spending part of your Tuesday evening with us right here on Hacker After Dark, on 1010XL, and on 92.5 FM. So for all of us here on HAD, have an absolutely terrific remainder of your Tuesday evening, and we will talk to you again tomorrow night on a Wednesday beginning at 8 o'clock.